So I don't often um, make notes, but I, there's a few things I wanted to say. And in light of the, the deep emotion I felt, I thought I would share that when I looked down at my notes, what I see are the words refrigerator light, hose for the garden, tub cleaner. This is my target list. I, sorry. <laughs> That's true. You can see it. But I digress. We're, if you're new, we're silly sometimes. There's a significance to Community Day that I think is easily missed or overlooked. Over the last year, I think we've talked a lot about the importance of community. And you've heard different board members and myself get up here and talk about how much we need each other to make this thing happen, Althea. But the truth is, what we've been talking about over the last year is a lot of physical stuff. We've needed donations so we can save our roof. We still need donations, so then we can save everything underneath it. Um, <laughs> we're going to have this great roof and, you know, the walls falling down, and <laughs> stove exploding. But anyway, we'll get there. Um, and we also talk about other forms of physical giving. We need volunteers. We need volunteers to help with events and to give each other rides and these kinds of things. And these are all important elements of being a community. We help each other to do things. We help this place to continue. But there's a purpose behind it all, right? And that is what this community is about, what this community serves, who this community is, what we share. In the honor and respect of all our diversity, the few simple things that we share at the heart of it all, which is the belief that the spiritual path matters. And I would dare say for most of us, the belief that the spiritual path is probably the most important thing in our lives, or should be, or could be, for what we understand is that on this path, or through this path, all the elements of life and who we are come together. Our emotional world, our physical world, our world of work, our world of friendship, every part of who we are is held by the bigger spirit, our soul, and that source from which we come. And so we have a purpose to this place and to this volunteering, and yet that's not the end of it. Because that can still be, for lack of a better word, kind of a shallow or short-sighted vision of community. Like we all sit in separate seats with a common intention to grow, to mature spiritually, to discover what it means to awaken to the unity of all things, to do that together in the same room side by side is a very, very, let's just say, thin view of the path, of the opportunity. It suggests something very, if you don't mind me saying this, because I love ancient tradition, and I am a big fan of honoring our roots, but somewhere a few hundred years ago, maybe arguably 500 years ago, arguably a couple thousand years ago, an idea started to emerge that got us into a lot of trouble inside our spiritual communities. And that is that if I can get okay with God, then that's good enough. Do you understand what I'm saying? That if I can discover God, if I can feel God, if I can awaken, then I have fulfilled my spiritual path say nothing about how I treat my neighbors, my family, my coworkers, and especially the people I don't yet understand. It's vertical. It's, quote, profoundly personal. And screw you if you don't get it. But that's not it, is it? 
Because when you are in your deepest moment of that experience of the divine, you're feeling something else. Despite what you might have felt when you sat down to meditate or pray or do yoga or study, when you enter that moment of connection, you realize that spirituality is spherical, not vertical, and not just horizontal either. Right? It's not just, oh, if I'm a good person, it'll all be all right. And it's not just if I understand the complex nature and the metaphysics of the divine, I'll be all right. Those were the options we've been given for the most part until now. Horizontal spirituality, vertical spirituality. But I do believe that the world has already begun to awaken to something else. And this community started to awaken to it over a hundred years ago. And that is that spirituality is spherical, which means it goes out in all directions. It's about every choice, every decision, how you spend your money, what you put in your body, what you wear. It's not just the big stuff, how you vote and how you are in relationships. It's everything. And that means we need each other in the most profound way. In the most profound way, because the person you struggle with here, the person you haven't met here, the person that it may inspires you or makes you laugh here, every single one of them is holding a piece of you, waiting for you to reclaim it, waiting for you to remember it. It's funny because I have a, an unusual position here, obviously. I'm just the guy who gets up to talk a lot. I know, and I like it. <laughs> but the most important thing that I can give you is each other. It's not something I know. It's not something I have. It's an opportunity to be real in this world to be present in this world. And the truth is, teachers and therapists, I mean, we can help, but where it really happens is in real life. When you go for lunch together, when you're waiting for the bathroom together, when one person has a song sheet and another person doesn't, when one person needs a help out the door or, or whatever it might be, that's where your practice is. That's what community is. That is at least a spiritual concept of community. So that we remember that deep in the heart of all our difference and diversity lives the same source spirit longing for itself again and the unique reunion and connection that can only be made between you and that which you are in relationship to. And that is extraordinary. And that's why we need each other. Because you can try to do this work with people who don't know that it's happening, and it's kind of hit and miss. You know, the grocery store, or the coworker, or the family member, and you want to process how you felt about what they said, and who they are, and how that revealed your truth. Doesn't always go so well, does it? But what we do when we show up here as communities, we make an unspoken commitment to be here for each other, with each other, together. And it's not going to be easy for everyone. And we're going to do it in different ways, and some of us more openly and loudly, and some of us more quietly and intimately. But make no mistake, we need each other. For the most important work of life happens in relationship. And I dare say, to find God in nature, in solitude, in the peaceful beauty of our own hearts, it's big work, but that's the easy stuff. To take what you find there and then show it, express it, embody it, that, that's big work. That's difficult work, and yet that is the most rewarding 
work of all because what comes from that is an awakening to the love and the beauty that is everywhere and our freedom, our freedom to recreate, to express and become one moment at a time. It sounds fairly simple to say, but as you know, the work is lifelong. And that's why spiritual traditions, time after time, age after age, nation after nation, have all said, build your community, find your fellow travelers, and help each other along the way. And that, to me, is what this day is about. People say, what am I really committing to? Is this a religion? Is this a cause? Am I going to be on a list in some national registry? I don't think so. We're not submitting that, are we, Pam? No. <laughs> We're too busy. It's a commitment to yourself, to your path, to being the fullest expression of yourself your soul, your spirit, that you can be, and making that claim or setting that intention in such a way that you are willing to be held accountable, that you are willing to do it with others, and in the process, give back with your time, your talent, yes, even with your money, so that we can continue this important work as a community, not just for ourselves, but ultimately for a better world. So let's take a moment and close these thoughts. And before we begin our community song, which I'm told used to be an old favorite. So we hope that's true for those that have been coming and sustaining this community for, for decades and beyond. But I'm going to invite you first just to take a moment to close your eyes and just hold in your heart who you would like to be in community with and then explore that circle. Let it be a spiral. And maybe today the only commitment you can make in your heart is just to be a little kinder and gentler with yourself. Or maybe it's going to be to extend that love and, and understanding to the few family members you came with. Or maybe you can just feel your way into something deeper. The willingness to find yourself in anyone and everyone. The willingness to love and learn fearlessly. Fearlessly. 